ideal happiness. Happiness can be grouped or classed in many different ways. Let us examine the Buddha's classification of happiness into 13 pairs. Here are some simple examples from this classification. Physical happiness, kayika sukha, and mental happiness, chetasika sukha. Material happiness, samisa sukha, happiness dependent on material things and independent happiness, niramisa sukha, happiness independent of material things. Householder's happiness, gihi sukha, and the happiness of renunciance, papadita sukha. Sense pleasure, karma sukha, happiness derived from desirable and alluring sights, sounds, smells, tastes, and tangibles. Happiness from acquisition and consumption, and happiness secluded from sensuality, ne karma sukha, happiness free from sensuality, free from sensual allurements and enticements, happiness of renunciation, happiness not tied up with acquisition. The Buddha gave this teaching to distinguish between the many different kinds of happiness. Moreover, through a familiarity with this teaching, one understands the relationship between different kinds of happiness. On a related subject, knowledge of the various kinds of happiness enables one to outline the ideal forms of happiness. Here a recognition that happiness is the goal of spiritual training is connected to the teaching on the different planes of existence or different states of mind <coughs> which a person can reach through spiritual cultivation. The universe is traditionally divided into three planes of existence, Te Bu Maka, the realm of sensuality, Kama Bhumi, where beings are still tied up in sense pleasure, the realm of fine material form, Rupa Bhumi, <coughs> the plane of fine material Brahmas, Rupa Brahma, and the immaterial realm, Arupa Bhumi, the plane of immaterial Brahmas, Arupa Brahma, Another plane, the transcendent plane, Lokutara Bhumi, <coughs> exists, surpassing the threefold plane of existence. In relation to the threefold plane of existence, the term Bhumi refers to a specific world, Loka, or sphere of existence, occupied by beings native to that plane or realm. Alternatively, it refers to the particular state of mind developed by beings to reach such a plane. The second definition referring to one's state of mind can also be applied in relation to the transcendent plane. What this means is that a, per a percentage of beings dwelling in a specific plane of existence, in particular some human beings in this world may have developed various states of mind and in effect have reached various planes including the transcendent plane. <coughs> These planes Bhumi can be grouped as follows 1. Sensual plane Kama Bhumi 2. Fine material form plane Rupa Bhumi and the immaterial plane Arupa Bhumi these constitute the realm of the Brahma gods. Three transcendent plane Lokutara Bhumi. In relation to happiness, these three planes can be described thus: one, sensual plane, endowed with sense pleasure, Kama Sukha. The ideal is to be a divine being, Deva, or to be born in heaven, Saga. Here, one has developed oneself 
and reach the <coughs> supreme kind of sense of pleasure. Although one is still endowed with the suffering dukkha of unawakened beings, one is free from oppression and punishment. To Brahma plain, endowed with the happiness of jhana, jhana sukha, here the ideal is to be born as a Brahma god. Three transcendent plane, endowed with the happiness of Nibbana, Nibbana Sukha. Here the ideal is the fruit of Arahantship. <coughs> Buddhism is a system of training for the spiritual development of human beings. It follows the principle that every individual should continually cultivate him or herself and reach more refined forms of happiness. Moreover, at any one time, different people exist at different stages of development. For this reason, <coughs> the world the world should be a conducive place for each individual to make progress according to which stage he or she is at. When one sets happiness to be the goal of spiritual training, human beings should develop themselves in the three planes mentioned above in order to reach successively more refined levels of happiness. Through moral training one develops physical actions in order to create a beneficial relationship to one's environment. And one cultivates morality in order to support others and to live together happily. In short, by developing generosity and virtuous conduct one attains the delights of heaven. Through mental training, while abiding in such a conducive environment, one develops the mind in virtuous qualities, in particular the four divine abidings, Brahma Vihara. Established in concentration, one's mind is steady, poised and happy. One develops happiness of mind until one reaches the happiness of jhana. <coughs> Through wisdom training, by relying on the accomplishments of mind development, one cultivates wisdom and insight. One sees things clearly according to the truth. One discerns conditionality. One knows how to successfully reach the goal. One is able to solve problems and dispel suffering. And one frees the mind and reaches the happiness of Nibbana. Heavenly beings amuse themselves with sensual objects and activities. Brahma gods are satisfied by a refined happiness of mind, including the happiness of jhana. Arahants, having transcended the bonds of sense pleasure, fully realize the happiness of nibbana. Stream enterers access the happiness of all three planes of sense pleasure, happiness of the higher mind. Adi Chita Sukha and Transcendent Happiness, Lokutara Sukha, having not yet abandoned any of these. <coughs>